Uh, I've always been blessed with uh, very good health. I've never broken a bone. Uh, knock on wood, I've never had major surgery. When I floss, my gums don't bleed. I'm just, I'm in very, very good shape. I think if, uh, if anyone was to ever take a knock at my health, it would just be the fact that I have debilitating panic attacks. Like they are horrific. And as a guy, like this is a blow to your ego because as you're a little kid growing up, they tell you that a man should be able to handle any kind of stressful situation, right? And somehow or another, panic has become the antithesis of that, even though it's not. Like, if you're like watching a, a ball game, you'll hear like a commentator say, like, you know, the, the, the quarterback's feeling the pressure coming from the left side, and, and he just panics, throws an interception. And that's what people think, but like, that's not what my panic attacks are like. Like, like. I can be walking along just chilling, and all of a sudden I can't breathe. And it's like, I mean, I can, I'm pulling air in, but it feels like it's coming in through a straw. And my heart then catches wind of the fact that I can't breathe, and it goes, what's that, you can't breathe? Well, holy shit, I'll start beating really fast. And I'm like, yeah, that's not helpful. <laughs> and it's like a little hummingbird, you know? It's like, like Rocky on the speed bag, just ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, and it feels like it's gonna pop, and I can't breathe, and I feel like I'm dying, and I just wanna like come up with one thought where I can just focus on it, but I can't, because my head's swimming around, and, and, and it's, it's beating, and I can't breathe, and then all of a sudden, just like that, it ends. And it's crazy because with panic, it's actually nothing. Like, there, all, this, all this is in your head. Like, you're saying to yourself, like, I, I can't breathe. You can breathe. You can breathe just fine. Like, pull some air in. Blow it out. Like, that's breathing. Ah, my heart's going crazy. It's not. Like, it, that's a normal heart rate right there, you know? So I've been through enough panic attacks now that I have breathing exercises. And I have Xanax, which I love. It's fantastic. <laughs> so nine times out of 10, I can get through my panic attacks. But the 10th time is a doozy. And that was the one that I had last December. It was the weeks leading up to Christmas. And again, like completely low pressure. Like there's nothing going. You know that time at like, like right before Christmas in the office where you walk around and people are like wrapping presents in their office? And you're like, really? Like you're not even going to try to pretend like you're working? Like, <laughs> That's what it was like. Just to give you an idea like how slow it was, I went and took a two-hour lunch break, and I went downtown, and I got some Thai food, and then I come back, and I'm doing some like end-of-the-year closeout BS, and all of a sudden, I can't breathe. And I was like, oh, all right, that's cool. I'll stand up, and I'll just do one of my breathing exercises. But as I went to breathe in, I suddenly had a sharp pain in my heart, and it was brutal. I mean, it felt like somebody was like stepping on my chest with cleats. And then all of a sudden, my left arm went numb, and I went, oh my god, I'm having a heart attack. Right here at work. And like, the worst fear for me is like having to go out and tell my coworkers that I need help. So I'm like, all right, I'll just like pace in my office, see if I can walk this heart attack off the way, you, <laughs> the way you do, you know. But it's not going away. The chest pain's getting worse. And so I finally go outside, and I walk across the hall, and I go to this woman that I've worked with for like 10 years. So she knows the drill, and I knocked on her door, and I opened it, and I said, hey, I think I'm having a heart attack. And she gave me this really sweet, pitiful look, and she said, a heart attack or a panic attack? <laughs> and I went, ah, yeah, no, I, I can see why you might think that. No, I'm actually having a heart attack right now. <laughs> I said, I think I'm going to need you to call 911. And she goes, okay, we could do that, or we could wait five minutes, see if it passes. <laughs> And I'm like, you really like uh, want your last words to be to be this, this condescending? I, so I said, yeah. So I go back into my own office and I stand there for about a second and then I collapse on the floor. And I'm laying there and now I have a decision to make. I said, well, do I call 911 and have EMTs storm the Discovery Communications building, come up to the sixth floor, take that over, and wheel me out on a gurney? which will inevitably be over a panic attack, because that's how my life goes, or do I die here in my office of a heart attack? I said, well, I mean, it's a no-brainer. I said, well, I said, well, well, let's just think about this for a second. Let's say I died in my office. I, the pros would be like they'd have something to say about me at my funeral, right? I mean, anyway, Mike Kane was a hard-working son of a bitch, I'll tell you what. They were right up to the end. The guy was mid-email. You gotta love that. 
But then on the other hand, I was like, I don't want to die. Like, yeah. And as, the, as I'm short of breath, my, my, my chest hurts, and I started thinking about my kids. And I had two little girls, and the thought of never hugging one of them ever again or, like, holding them, really, that was all I could start thinking about. And now I could feel it, and it, I, mean, I can't, I, there's no breath coming at this point. Now I'm thinking of my wife, with whom I'm, like, madly in love with. And I'm thinking, like, God, if she loves me half as much as I love her, this would just be absolutely devastating. Like, how would she ever get through that? Like, somewhere in the back of my head, I always kind of thought that, like, she would go first, and I would be able to... <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Like, this is like... I always thought, like, she would go first, and I would be able to kind of bear that grief for her, because I didn't think she could, you know, I was like, I hoped it would go that way. And I was like, I'm dying. And I said, well, who's going to provide for my family? And then I remember that I have a double indemnity clause in my, in my life insurance. I was like, well, okay, at least they would get paid. But I was like, no, I don't want to die. And so I'm laying there, and as I'm thinking, maybe I should try and climb up and grab the phone. My coworker walks in, and she's like, hey, how are you? Oh. And she sees me laying on the floor, and she immediately calls 911. And I'm sure more time than this passed, but it felt like a minute before everything that I had imagined had come true. Like, all of my coworkers, like, trying to see in my office as EMTs are bringing a stretcher in. They get past them. They walk in, and the guy takes, mm, like, maybe half a glance at me, and he goes, dude, do you suffer from panic attacks? <laughs> and I went, I do, I do, but right now I'm dying of a heart attack. Go. And he goes, no, you're not. You're having a panic attack. Stand up. And I was like, what? I was like, dude, with the chest pain and the numb arm. And he goes, come on, get on the big boy bed. <laughs> I was like, what? Ah. And as he said this, my breath started coming back. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. And like, he helps me up. And he puts me on the, on the stretcher. And he starts to wheel me past all of my coworkers that are just looking at me like, oh, again, really? Like, <laughs> you couldn't ride it out? And I was like, oh, happy holidays, guy. <laughs> We got to the elevator. By the time we hit the first floor, like, I could feel the color back in my face. We get into the ambulance. At this point, like, you know you're fine, like, when your first thought in the ambulance is, I don't know if my health insurance covers ambulance rides. I <laughs> should check it. And I guess, like, just to be a good sport, they put the siren on for me. But they didn't, they didn't even have They took me to Washington Adventist. Anybody been to Washington Adventist emergency? Like, that's no joke. Like, that's a real emergency room. I've never been to one like this before. The place is, like, slam-packed. And, like, I mean, every curtained-off area has, like, some crazy emergency in it. And there were so many people in here that they have actually lined the patients up against the wall that are either in, like, stretchers or in wheelchairs. And, and I'm in there, and there's a bunch of nurses that are running around. They're completely overworked, and they look frenzied. And it's me among either people with, like, the worst mental illnesses you've ever seen, like, people, like, trying to pick things out of the air. And I was like, whoa, I guess, you know. And then all of a sudden they wheel this guy in. And he's yelling, and he's got a white sheet up above him, and he's like a big red spot here, and he's like, I've been shot! Huh? I've been shot! And this woman's running in behind him, she's like, my baby's been shot! And I'm watching this, and I'm like, whoa, he got shot! And this nurse runs up to me while I'm doing this, and she goes, hey, why are you here? And I went, huh? Oh, oh, uh, why am I, um... I, uh... Hmm. Sometimes I get nervous. <laughs> she was like, you had a panic attack? I was like, oh, but there was chest pain involved. And she goes, oh, was there? She's like, did you, did you eat anything spicy today? And I was like, oh, as a matter of fact, I did have some Thai food earlier for lunch. She was like, good, so you had a panic attack mixed with some heartburn. That's nothing. And then she goes, go out in the waiting room. Like, she kicked me out of the ER. I was like, what? So I had to do this walk of shame but past all these people that really need to be there. And I went out and I joined people's family members that were out there, like all the healthy people and me sitting out there. And I was out there for two hours. And finally, my wife and my daughters come rushing in. And they're like, what happened? And I was like, nothing. We're good. We can just, we can just get out. We can get out of here. And I never received any medical attention. I never did any paperwork, nothing. And so I walked out to the car, and I get in there, and I'm actually driving because I'm fine. <laughs> got my family in the car. And uh, as I'm, put, I'm putting my seatbelt on, my seven-year-old leans up from the back seat, and she says, Daddy, you were in the hospital. What was wrong? And I thought about telling her that, like, I thought my heart was going to pop, and I couldn't breathe, and I couldn't think. And I just turned around to her, and I said, nothing. There's nothing wrong with Daddy. Thanks. <laughs>